Hello, my name is Kant Slobodchikov. I would like to tell you about the studies that my students and I have been doing in decoding the language of prairie dogs. Our studies have concentrated primarily on the language of one of the five species of prairie dogs, the Gunnison's prairie dog. However, it is very likely that the other four species of prairie dogs also have similar complexity in language. Prairie dogs have alarm calls that they give when they see a predator. These alarm calls are a series of relatively high-pitched notes that sound somewhat like a bird chirping. The alarm calls have been a Rosetta Stone for us in decoding prairie dog language because we can see the predator approach, we can record the alarm calls of the prairie dogs in response to the predator, we can videotape the escape responses of the prairie dogs, and then, when there is no predator present, we can play back the alarm calls that we previously recorded and videotape the escape responses of the prairie dogs to the playback. If the escape responses to the playback match those that happened when the predator was present, then we know that there is meaningful information encoded into the alarm call. We can bring the alarm call recordings into our laboratory and use computer analysis to look at the acoustic structure of the calls. Computer software generates a sonogram, which is a pictorial representation of the frequencies and time values contained in a vocalization. Prairie dog alarm calls look like a series of stacked chevrons, kind of like sergeant stripes with the peak pointing upward. Each call is about a tenth of a second, so it is very brief. Most of the calls are repeated multiple times, so that you hear something that sounds like we can then measure the frequency and time values within a chirp and use statistical analysis to determine whether an alarm call for, say, a coyote is the same as, or different, than an alarm call for, say, a human. So the analysis of the sounds is based on rigorous statistical methods. Using observations and experiments, we have found that prairie dogs give different alarm calls to different species of predators. They have one alarm call that they give for coyotes that sounds like this. They have another alarm call that they give for domestic dogs that sounds like this. They have a third alarm call that they give for humans that sounds like this. They also have a single note alarm call that they give for red-tailed hawks that sounds like this. Amazingly enough, even though some dogs look like coyotes, prairie dogs never mistake a dog for a coyote or vice versa and always give an appropriate alarm call for each. We have also found that each alarm call contains information not only about the species of predator, but also contains information about the description of the individual predator. For example, a human alarm call contains information not only about the intruder being a human, but also contains information about the size, shape, and color of clothes that the human is wearing. When we do an experiment where the same person walks out into a prairie dog colony wearing different colored t-shirts at different times, the prairie dogs will have alarm calls that contain the same description of the person's size and shape, but will vary in their description of the color. Like many mammals, prairie dogs have dichromatic vision, which means that they can see blue, some green, and yellow, but not red. Using experiments in the field in the laboratory, we have found that prairie dogs can also describe the size, shape, and coat color of domestic dogs. Amazingly enough, prairie dogs can also describe objects that they have never seen before. In one experiment, we showed the prairie dogs a silhouette of a black oval, and they all consistently had the same alarm call for the black oval. In other experiments, we have shown prairie dogs silhouettes of circles and triangles, and they consistently have different alarm calls for the circles versus the triangles. Using computer analysis, we have shown that the alarm calls are made up of smaller units of sound, very much like human phonemes such as vowels and consonants. 
So each alarm call of a prairie dog is equivalent to a human sentence composed of nouns and adjectives and smaller units of sounds that make up these nouns and adjectives. The nouns are the species of predator, such as coyote or domestic dog. The adjectives are the physical descriptions of the predators, such as tall, thin, or yellow. We have also found that prairie dog alarm calls have dialects, much like human dialects. Just like a person from California might say the word dog somewhat differently from a person saying dog in Georgia, prairie dogs also have slight differences in the way that they pronounce an alarm call for, say, human in Arizona versus in New Mexico versus in Colorado. Prairie dogs have other vocalizations that we can't yet decode because we don't know the context. They have social chatters in which one prairie dog will lift up its head and go chatter, 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 and another prairie dog somewhere in the colony will respond with another string of chatter. Nothing about the behavior of the two prairie dogs changes. We can show that the syllables within the chatters are different, but because there are no behavioral changes, we lack the Rosetta Stone to decode the meaning of this. Prairie dogs also wave their tails around in a behavior known as tail flagging. But again, we don't know what the meaning of this is either. One of the best known signals of the black tail and Mexican prairie dogs is the jump yip, where the prairie dog stands up on its hind legs, stretches its front legs up towards the sky, and produces a yipping call. This occurs in many different contexts, such as territorial disputes, a predator leaving, or a snake appearing. No one has looked at the acoustic properties of these calls to see if they're different for different contexts. Sometimes the jump yip call occurs when there's no obvious context. Maybe in that case, the prairie dogs are simply saying, hooray, it's a wonderful day. I am often asked whether prairie dogs of one species can understand the language of prairie dogs of a different species. While I have not done the experiments to test this, just looking at sonograms of the different species vocalizing to the same human wearing the same color of clothes suggests that the answer is probably no. It looks like the different species have different languages, just like we have French, Spanish, German, Russian, and Portuguese. At the present time, prairie dogs have the most sophisticated animal language that has been decoded, more sophisticated than even primates, whales, and dolphins. But my guess is that once we start looking at the vocalizations and signals of other animal species within specific contexts, just like we've been doing with prairie dogs, we'll find that a lot more species have complex languages. If you would like to know more about prairie dogs, you can find out a lot more about prairie dog language in the book Prairie Dogs, Communication and Community in an Animal Society. You can find a link to this book on my website, www.konslobachikov.com.